In this video, I'll be discussing DMM programming in Visual Studio. I'll be using the introductory programming examples for the 34460 and 34461A DMMs as our test code. Many of you can use this as an introduction to programming Agilent instruments in Visual Studio. My name is David Tu, and to keep the video a little bit more interesting, you can imagine my voice coming out of astronaut sloth over here. I'll be going over the usage of VisaCom, including opening and closing a session, and how to handle timeouts. I'll talk about developing in Visual Studio and some of the best practices that I that I use for programming, uh, including try catch routines and a function that captures the DMM errors. And finally, we'll be doing a run of uh, setting up the DMM for voltage, current, resistance, frequency, and temperature, and do a live debug of the program. I'll primarily be using C Sharp as my test bed, but we'll also be using Visual Basic .NET uh, in this video as well, just to highlight some of the differences. Let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio 2005 and the C Sharp solution file. I developed the code in Visual Studio 2005 because it is, it is easier to upgrade versus downgrade from a Visual 2010 solution file to a 2005 version. Um, now that I have it open, you'll notice that the solution file has eight different projects, which basically includes all eight of our programming examples. Each project contains its own little programming example. Um, we're going to focus in on the basic functions example for this video. And the first thing I want to do is I actually want to set this as the start startup project. That way, when we do start debugging the code, uh, it'll actually uh, debug this code versus some of the other projects that we have loaded here. Um, the other thing we wanted to discuss was the VisaCom library. Um, a lot of people have questions about how to add a reference, so um, I'm just going to right click and click add a reference here. And under the COM tab, I'm going to type in VIS, which will drop me right down to VisaCom 3.0 library. And I'll press OK, and that kind of just re-adds this VisaCom library. So after you've done that, the first step to actually coding and talking to an instrument is by setting up a resource manager and then opening up a session to your DMM. The application note that I've uh, put a link down here actually discusses this in pretty good detail. And so you can read that and it should answer most of your questions that you will have. Um, one of the features that I put in here is I have at the top a uh, using line, using IVI visa dot interop. So when I do that in Visual Studio, that means that I really don't have to type in this header portion to get to the lower level methods. So what that means is that I can actually type in the code as IVI dot visa dot interop. As, as you'll notice, as I'm typing, it kind of um, sets up the, the code for me. So that's called IntelliSense in Visual Studio. Um, dot resource dot resource manager so I can do it that way or I can just type in resource manager rm equals new blah 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 so that's uh, one of the nice features of Visual Studio and one of the reasons why I primarily like to develop in Visual Studio um, let's see the next step to actually start talking to your instrument is to set up a DUT address. Um, this is just a variable that I like to put in there so that when we open up the session, it's a little bit cleaner. But uh, for each of your IOs, you will actually have a different string for setting up your DUT address. Um, I've put in examples for GPIB, LAN, and USB here. And for this example, we're actually going to open up IO libraries and talk to this particular instrument over here. And what I'm going to do is click here, click on the instrument, and just copy over the VC address and paste it into our program. That will allow me to talk to that instrument. Um, next step, we'll actually open up a handle to that instrument by um, setting the open command, the dot address, the access mode no lock, so it means that other controllers can talk to that instrument setting the initial timeout to two seconds, and then um, option string, which I, I don't really use, so I don't know what that means. Um, the next line that we have in the code is we set the reset the time, 
instrument timeout to three seconds. For those of you that aren't familiar, this timeout isn't actually a program timeout or a bus timeout. It's actually, um, if the instrument doesn't give me a response within three seconds, an error will be thrown and it'll actually um, be caught by our error handler. At this point, I guess it's a good good uh, time to talk about some uh, the error handler, which includes a try-catch try routine. A try-catch routine kind of everything runs everything that's inside the braces for the try. So it'll try to run the code, and then if there's an error, it'll actually go into the catch. And the uh, for our catch routine, we actually just write down that there's an error occurred and whatever the error message is. The finally statement basically says, after the try catch code has run, it'll uh, finally run all this other code. In our finally code, we actually close the handle for the DMM if it's possible, release the com object for the handle as well as the resource manager. And finally, just so that the program doesn't close without you actually seeing the mess error messages, we actually say press any key to continue. Another uh, best practice beside that try catch is to write a DMM uh, error handler. So basically after every uh, set of commands, I send this check DMM error. Uh, it's a method that basically sends the syst error command to the DMM and checks if there is actually something wrong with the DMM itself. So if that response string from the DMM says no error, then it's just gonna con uh, return and say, let's go ahead and proceed with the rest of our program. However, if there is an error, it'll continue to send the system error command to the DMM uh, until it receives the no error string. And then all those error strings will be accumulated and thrown as an exception, which will then be printed out to our console. Let's go ahead and return back to our main line of code and start discussing the actual code that talks to the DMM. One of the things that I like to do is I like to kind of clear out the instrument and make sure it's in a good state and I'm talking to the right instrument. So um, I can clear a clear the bus on the instrument by sending this io.clear command. Uh, send a star rst command. Um, this is actually the first time I'm actually sending a command, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, this write string command actually has two parameters, which is the data and then the boolean flush to an end uh, parameter. So really, the star st is the command I want to send to the instrument. And then um, the second parameter, I've always set to true. So it, it's um, it's actually an optional parameter in Visual Basic and uh, later versions of Visual Studio. But for Visual Studio 2005 C Sharp, it's a uh, non-optional parameter. So we, we have to set that. But you'll notice in our Visual Basic.net code, I don't um, actually have to send that second parameter. So um, let's go ahead and pop back over C sharp. So I send that star st, and uh, secondly, I send the star idn command. So star idn just says, um, what instrument are you? And uh, tell me what your identity string is. Um, I send the command, and here's where I first do a read string um, response, try and get a response from the DMM. And I uh, do that by getting reading a string and sa saving as a uh, variable. And then finally, I read it out to the um, to the console. Um, I mentioned uh, configuring for voltage, current, uh, resistance, and all that stuff. So basically, in this programming example, we actually do talk. Uh, we do configure the uh, DMM to lots of different functions and just do a quick read for it. Um, one of the things to mention about these commands is that they can actually be found in the um, manual that you can download. And there's a Skippy programming reference section, uh, which has all of these commands. And these commands can be found in the configure subsystem. Um, it's pretty straightforward for this program example, but I know a lot of you don't um, necessarily know how to uh, send the commands and what the parameters are, so you can actually go through these and um, try it out. It's, it's really a very basic example, but um, in general, what it does, each of these configure commands kind of set the range and resolution. You can actually just send the command like we do in for our resistance, which will then auto range and auto select your resolution for you. So you can send it without the parameters or you can send it 
um, with the parameters to be a little bit more specific on what you want to run. So I think that we are ready to actually try to run this uh, this code and actually maybe debug it as well. So um, maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll set a um, breakpoint here by clicking over on this left hand side and press run. So the first thing you'll notice is that it actually reported what my IDN string is. So talking to this unit right here. So I can actually step through each line of code by pressing this button here and watch each line execute. Um, I just watched or wrote out the DC voltage reading. The DMN currently has open terminals, so the readings are going to be either really small or um, open terminal readings. And then here we actually uh, run the check DMM error, so let's step into that and it'll actually check that the DMM had no error. So I can scroll over the variable and see that they see what the value is. So that's a nice feature of Visual Studio. Um, so I'm going ahead and let it continue to run. And what you'll see is that each of the readings kind of came back um, for AC voltage, DC current, AC current, two wire resistance, four wire resistance, frequency, and temperature. So it's a nice little uh, program that configures all of the uh, functions for your DMM. All right, uh, I think that's about it for our example today. It's a long video, but thanks for um, watching us, and uh, hopefully we'll get you to watch a few more videos. So thank you very much, and remember, Astronaut Sloth reminds you to reach for the stars.